Hello all you beautiful people, I hope you have had or are having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some more stuff about student life, especially now that a lot of people are investing into technology for their education, we're going to be looking at the iPad. I get a lot of questions from friends about stuff that I use on my iPad. So today we're going to be looking at everything that is on my iPad, everything that I use during school, everything that I actually find useful. I'm going to be giving you guys my honest review. At the beginning of the video, I'm going to review my iPad a little bit before we go into actually what's on it, just so you guys know what I'm working with, whether or not I like it, whether or not I think it's actually useful, and then we'll get into everything that is on my iPad. I know a lot of friends of mine have been getting iPads recently, especially the people that are going into the IB they have been investing in iPads because it is a very useful thing and that's what I want to kick this video off with the iPad is an extremely useful and amazing tool when it comes to the IB I'm fairly sure correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below but in the IB you don't necessarily have normal like copy books or like there aren't any there aren't restrictions as there were in the MYP that is where an iPad comes in very very handy you have essentially a notebook for every subject in one device. You can store stuff online, you can access it from multiple places, your phone, your laptop, anywhere you need to. So it's just really convenient when you're working with, you know, different subjects across the board. You can do all sorts of amazing things with an iPad that you simply can't with a copybook. So before I move on, I'm going to talk to you guys about the iPad that I'm rocking. It is a 2017 iPad Pro 11 inch, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the model that came out. That's what I'm rocking, the 2017 iPad Pro. It's in space gray, I'll just show you guys the back cover here. Space gray and 256 gigs, I believe is the model that I have in front of me right now. I also have an Apple Pencil to go along with it. You cannot be getting yourself an iPad, let alone an iPad Pro, if you do not invest in an Apple Pencil. This is an invaluable tool and I use it all the time. I'll tell you what applications I use this pencil with a little later on in the video. I also have this clear hard shell cover. It has saved me multiple times. My iPad has fallen a lot. I try to take really good care of it, but you know, those slips do eventually happen. This thing is pretty lightweight and can slip out your hands easily. It also came with a little Apple pen holder, which kind of broke on the side here. I don't know it kind of just snapped off one day. It used to hold my Apple pencil just like that and then you just clip it onto the side of your iPad, but one of the pegs here is broken. So unfortunately you can't do that anymore. Not sure what cover this is exactly. If I do manage to find it, I'll put a link down in the comments below and I'll tag it in the description as well. And last but not least, the final accessory that I have along with my iPad is the foldable keyboard. You fold it out, this is what it looks like. All of the accessories that I have just mentioned have been absolutely amazing when it has come to productivity with my iPad. They have been an invaluable tool for me apart from this keyboard. I don't know, I just couldn't really get used to the keyboard. Maybe that's because I have a laptop to accompany my iPad in school. But for those of you who just have the iPad, I think the keyboard is a fantastic thing. I know I feel like this particular keyboard, the one that came out with the first generation of iPads, I believe is a little low in quality. You can see that it's starting to rip up on the sides and it's just not in good shape. I've had this iPad for approximately three years now. Yeah, it's 2020, I bought it in 2017. But the keyboard is, it's made out of a pretty weak material that breaks easily. I've taken fantastic care of it um, as to the best of my ability, but where it does come in handy is using it as a prop, you know, whether I wanna place it up so I can type uh, on the digital screen or place it up if in case I'm looking for something. In that case, it is very useful. But when it comes to an actual keyboard, I don't think it is the best investment if you are predominantly going to be using it for writing and if typing on the digital screen is, works fine for you. However, with the new 2020 series iPads that just came out, the one with the like levitating keyboard, dude, that looks absolutely crazy. Technical wise, it's also made out of metal, so it should hopefully last you a little longer, but if there is one thing that I'd watch out for when you get purchasing an iPad, it's definitely the keyboard. In my opinion, I don't think it's very necessary, but if you see yourself doing a lot of typing on your iPad, then it may be a good investment for you. Okay, now that we have all the physical specs out of the way and that you know a little bit about my iPad, we're going to be taking a look at what is actually on my iPad as a student going into the IB. Right now, you should hopefully be watching a screen recording of my iPad 
and you should see my home screen. So that is a fantastic place to begin. I'll take you guys through how my iPad is structured a little bit. On the left hand side, you can see that I've got all my widgets, my tabs, any useful information that I need in the mornings when I wake up. I've got the weather, check what it's like outside in case I have any activities planned for the day. I've got my shortcuts. I've learned to use shortcuts a little more nowadays. I didn't use them as much previously, but it has they have been real time savers, especially when it comes to good notes. I've got a link to GoodNotes, you can see it instantly pops up so I don't have to look for it. It's also down in my recents, but that's not permanent. I have also got a link to my school's online platform, Manage Back, which I can open up right here and it takes me directly to the page. So that is really useful. It's a time saver. I highly recommend that you guys use shortcuts within um, your Apple device, even if you have an iPhone, even if you have a MacBook. It is an application that already comes installed. You don't have to install it. If for some reason you don't, it is an Apple application. So you can just easily redownload it from the Apple store. I've also got the news, super important, especially nowadays with the coronavirus, it keeps me up to date. I don't also have to avidly listen to the news every evening or every morning. This thing automatically updates and it is fantastic. I definitely recommend that it's a widget you put into your little dock. Also for any of you who are wondering how you get this little side panel on your iPad, you go to settings, you go to home screen and dock and you put more. If you have bigger selected, you'll have to swipe to access that little side dock. If you have more selected, that side dock automatically stays there. And also, if that isn't appearing for you, if that home screen and dock tab isn't appearing for you, go to your general settings and go to software updates. Maybe you have a new update like I do just here. It didn't automatically install for me and this I'm pretty sure is only available with, yeah, it's only available with iPadOS 13.4.1. As a safe bet, just keep your iPad updated always. That way you'll have access to a lot of amazing features that Apple offers you with the iPad just to make your productivity a little more effective. And then last but not least, I also have my batteries. So I have my Apple Pencil battery. It just lets me know whether I need to charge it or not. It's very useful in case this thing is dying. It won't die on me in class because it'll give me a notification. It'll also tell you your iPad battery, which you can also see in the top right hand corner. So that's not as big of a deal. Anyways, moving on, we are going to start with some of the less important folders on my iPad and work our way up in order of importance. So without further ado, let's start with social. These, these are all my social networking applications. You know, you've got your Instagram, Hangouts, Messenger, Facebook, Shazam and Music ID aren't really social networking applications, but I consider them as social applications, you know, music, social, you know, whatever you'd like, whatever floats your boat. I've also got YouTube Studio to let me know whether you guys post any new comments. So if you put a comment down below, it's gonna display a little notification on my YouTube student I will reply to you and I've also got Snapchat. For those of you wondering, in case you cannot get social networking applications on your iPad, which you can on your phone, you need to go to the Apple store. You need to search whatever it is that you want to look for, let's say Instagram. And if Instagram isn't popping up on screen for you, you have to go to filters, you have to go to supports and iPhone only. That way, Instagram, Snapchat, Boomerang, all of this lovely stuff will pop up. And you can download it on your iPad. It's gonna seem a little distorted because it is an iPad, uh, it is an iPhone app, sorry, excuse me. So it might seem a little distorted on your iPad screen, but you'll just have to deal with it if you want the social networking apps on your iPad. Next, we have extras. Also, if my sister was watching this, she'll know this as time wasters. This folder has all my games. Whenever I'm feeling bored, I'll probably play some Zinja Poker. It's also got uh, all my music stuff. So guitar tuner, musician. I don't really use musician anymore, but when I did, it's also got PlayStation notifications, all of that. I am still a teenager. I enjoy teenage stuff. So yeah, um, not a very important folder, but, but if I am feeling a little down or bored, then I'll just hop into this folder and explore a little bit. Another folder that I like to keep organized is this Apple applications folder. Any Apple applications that I do not use because I definitely am not going to be using the home app anytime soon. I don't have any Apple products at home like an app or whatever it's called, the home pod. Yeah, I won't be checking stocks that often. I won't be listening to Apple podcasts that often. So anything that I won't use, GarageBand I use like, like on and off but anything that I don't use that is an Apple application I keep in this folder. And if I do need to use it, then I will find it in this folder. Any Apple applications that I do need to use and I use them regularly, I store outside of that folder. So calendar, photos, camera, contacts, clock, maps, notes, reminders, app store, all of that good stuff, settings especially. I keep outside that folder so I can access them super quick. YouTube and Netflix I use very frequently. So I keep those outside instead of in the social folder. Moving on, we have the dock, which I've reorganized slightly. Um, 
compared to the Apple one, they give you stock. I've put my Gmail app and my Spotify app instead of the Apple Mail app and Apple Music because I use Spotify, not Apple Music, and I use uh, the Gmail app instead of just regular mail because for some reason, if I sign in on the regular mail, I can't get the like little red notifications to pop up and I've got like literally thousands of unchecked emails from like promotions and all of that. So yeah, I use Gmail just so I don't have that little notification button there because it drives me absolutely nuts. My files app is a little empty right now. This is all just like school stuff, uh, but here you can see my main files app. I usually use an online drive like Google Drive or iCloud to store all my documents, especially any notes that I will be getting into very soon. It is nice that Apple have finally updated their files um, uh, application though, because previously you could not store like Word documents or something like that on your iPad directly. So those 250 gigs were essentially useless for me unless I were taking like 80 minute long videos. So that is a fantastic update. Apple have implemented into their software and into the iPad OS which allows you to save stuff on your iPad directly. Now the most important folder and essentially the topic of today's video is my work folder. So I'll be running you through the applications that I have on my work folder, beginning with all Microsoft applications and Google applications. So I've got Word, PowerPoint and Excel. In the odd case that I need to download a file and edit it on my iPad, I have Office 365 instead of permanent Office on one device because I can sign in into whatever, I believe, not whatever device, I believe five devices at the same time. So in case I do need to download that odd file off of ManageBack or my teacher has posted something somewhere, I can download it and edit it in Word directly. PowerPoint, Excel, same thing there, no brainer for me, especially as a student, I use them all the time. Uh, if I'm not using them on my iPad, I am using them on my laptop. Docs, slides and sheets in case I'm doing any group projects, docs, slides and sheets is an amazing way I can work on the same document with a bunch of my buddies in a group project. Now, of course, the drive, I keep a lot of information in my drive and whatever isn't in my drive, it's on my local disk on my laptop. I definitely recommend you guys invest in either an iCloud subscription or a Google Drive subscription. I don't have a Google Drive subscription. I have the iCloud subscription. I always use Google Drive alongside iCloud and I have those two storage areas which I rely on heavily. Moving on, I'm going to leave Notability and GoodNotes until the very end because those are important applications that I need to talk about in detail. We're going to look at Procreate and Canva. Procreate is a fantastic app that I don't use very often because I'm not very artistic, but in case friends need to use it or something, I have it downloaded. And in case I want to doodle, like right here, I use this for geography projects. So that was pretty useful. Um, that was one of my friend's pieces a while back. I did not draw these, I'm not that skilled. These are just the base um, images that they give you. But Procreate, if you guys are art students or graphic designers looking to get into some sort of art college, go down a path of visual arts. Procreate is not, art, not even arguably, is definitely the best drawing app on the iPad. I definitely recommend you guys purchase. It's very inexpensive, it's a one-time purchase. I believe it's somewhere around eight, nine euros, 10 euros max. So definitely get Procreate if you're looking to pursue visual arts. Canva, another app that I use for design in case I need to make a poster, an infographic, uh, in case I need to make thumbnails for YouTube, I have it on my iPad. Usually I do all my Canva work on my laptop, but I have it on my iPad in case I need it. Now, manage back, seesaw, again, platforms where my teachers can communicate information with me. Um, for all of you guys out there who do use manage back and seesaw, there are apps for them, so you don't need to go on the internet every single time to look for your work online. You could just download the apps. Google Classroom is another one of those apps where my teachers can communicate information to me and upload files with work so that I can receive it and do it accordingly. Calculator app, the iPad does not have an Apple calculator built into it, so you will need to download yourself a calculator app. This app is free. It has a couple ads on it, which is a little downside, but it is a scientific calculator and it's pretty useful when it comes to doing math and especially now when I don't have my scientific calculator or graphic calculator with me this app does save you quite a bit zoom video calling app it's similar to Skype especially now with e-learning I use zoom all the time to communicate with my teachers I have online lessons also use it to keep in touch with friends it's a great application seeing as Skype doesn't work for everyone for any of you guys familiar with the application my maths the puffin Academy is how you access my maths through your iPad this was especially useful for me during younger years. I don't use the Puffin Academy very frequently anymore, but for those of you who, who are wondering about it, um, it is how you access my maths, which is an application I used when I was in the younger years to do online mathematics. 
online record book. I do participate in the Yuka of Edinburgh Award every single year. This year, I'm, well, not anymore. I was doing the Silver Award, but unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, it got cut. Uh, the ORB participant application is just a way I can check um, any updates to my tasks and my activities. Google Translate, of course, for any languages in case uh, I get stuck and need a little bit of help and the teacher isn't there. Class Kicks, another one of those applications in which teachers can give you online work and monitor you in real time. Flipgrid, another one of those applications for work. And Filmic Pro, for those of you wondering, I do not film on my normal camera app. I film on Filmic Pro, which is an application that lets me use the full features of my camera. My, backward cam my backwards facing camera is a little busted, so I have to use my front facing camera. But even though it lets me adjust some stuff like lighting, focus, and it just helps me get more professional video with my front facing camera that isn't really all that great, but I have to make best of it. Now, the applications everyone has been waiting for, Notability and GoodNotes. Both of these applications are notes taking applications, arguably the two most popular and the most used applications on the iPad. Notability is where I personally started. It's got all my notes when I first started taking down notes on my iPad. I don't use Notability anymore because I've since moved on to using GoodNotes. I will explain why in another video because that is a very, very long topic. But Notability, you can see here, you can create a subject, create a divider. Within those subjects, you can create new notes. It's a fantastic application. To take down notes it's got one of the best organizational systems that i've seen in a note taking app ever if you feel that you as a person are a little bit disorganized i suggest looking into notability but if that's not a problem then i suggest looking at the next application which is good notes good notes has by far revolutionized the way that i learn and that i take down notes on my ipad this application is absolutely fantastic. I've fallen in love with it. It feels like paper, like real, I mean, absolutely legit paper. You've got all your different pens, your erasers, your highlighters, shapes, select tool, images, taking another photo. Yes, hello there. You probably won't be able to see this because it's a screen recording, text laser pointer it has got a plethora of things and tools at your disposal which you can use to you know go a little wild just even doodling on it is a lot nicer than notability in my opinion because notability only has a ballpoint pen which i don't really like i'm not a fan of it looks a little cheap in my idea notability please don't sue me i love your application it's fun it's got a fantastic organizational system but when it comes to taking down written notes, GoodNotes is absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna delete that document right there. Here you can see you've got more of a typical organizational system that you're probably used to on your desktop or laptop. You've got folders, which go into more folders, which go into even more folders. The organizational system on GoodNotes is probably a little worse than the one on Notability, but I just feel like the ease of use of GoodNotes and compared to that of Notability, it's just, leaps and bounds better so i personally use good notes when i'm taking down notes for school and yeah by far the most enjoyable and fantastic useful application that any ib students any future students will definitely want to get themselves but yeah guys anyway that has been about it for what is on my ipad i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you actually took away something from it maybe it gave you some inspiration as to how you could potentially organize your ipad if you get a new and some of the applications that I use and that I found useful. If you want me to do any application reviews, full reviews, I'm already going to be doing a GoodNotes versus Notability one. But if you guys want to ask me anything, absolutely anything about my iPad, then pop a comment down below. I will be more than happy to answer any questions that you have got. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, turn on the post notifications, the little bell icon, just to never miss another one of my videos. It really does help support me and help the YouTube algorithm recognize my videos and help many teenagers around the globe. If you guys have been around here for a little while, then you probably know it is my goal to hit 100 subscribers by the end of September. I know all of you are amazing and will help me do that. Share this video around with your friends, help me grow as a channel, I will greatly appreciate it. Get yourself an iPod, the holidays are coming up, if your birthday is coming up, trust me, it's a very useful tool and your parents will be all for it. If you need an advocate to help Help convince your parents a little extra show them this video anyway guys that is about it for me i will see all of you later
This is the first time you and I are meeting. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Salem. I'm a student. I'm 16 years old. I decided to start my YouTube journey because I felt like there was a lack of videos on the internet for teenagers, for people like us. It is so important that teens are educated properly in lifestyle, education, how to make the right choices, and most importantly, how they can grow to become an amazing individual with a fabulous personality. Anything I just said even remotely interests you, consider sticking around and watching some of my other videos. I'd be super grateful if you dropped me a follow on Instagram. My Snapchat is, that's my shameless plug for the day done.